it is eight o'clock central time. And if you did not do daylight savings time, it may be a different time in your area, but we are on here live on Twitch on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock central time, uh, nine o'clock Eastern time and six o'clock out there in Pacific time. And we are live here to talk. So if you are watching us on Twitch, please talk in the chat. We always love hearing questions from everyone out there. And if you're watching us on YouTube, down below, make sure you put any questions you have or comments, critiques, criticism, tomfoolery, or anything else you want to say down below, and we'll get to that. And I have a video up. I the video up. I had the video from last week up on one side of my screen so I can have a few questions, a few things there, as well as we have some other stuff. So uh, to go over a little bit, we talked a little bit last week um, about customers contacting you, and this was a post on social media on uh, Facebook uh, about a DJ being contacted and them uh, basically saying that, yeah, I'm hiring you for a party. And when it got closer to the date, uh, all of a sudden, yeah, we're doing a, a first dance. We're doing this, doing that. And they're like, no, you said a party, not a wedding. And basically it's a surprise. It's a wedding, not a party. Uh, Matt, you said you just ran into this situation. If you want to explain to everyone what happened, that would be great. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, luckily it wasn't like a booking that changed. It was just a lead through Yelp, uh, where's, which is where all the, uh, all the, um, I don't know what you would call it. All the tire kickers seem to end up. Um, and she said, Oh, you know, I'm looking for your pricing. It's here in Irvine. Uh, I'm looking for pricing for a party or whatever, or something. And uh, I was like, oh, what type of party? What's the occasion? She said, oh, it's a reception, four hours. And uh, then I followed up by saying, is this a wedding reception? Um, and she says, yes, it's for a wedding. And I'm like, okay, cool. Good thing I asked because I was about to send you my non-wedding pricing. Now I sent you my wedding pricing. Of course I got ghosted because, you know, uh, based on where she's trying to do it um, at a community center that's next to free if you live in the area, it makes sense. Um so I, I'm not upset about it, but it's just like, you know, some people, yeah, they, they try to treat a wedding as, uh, I, you know, you're, you're a DJ, your pricing should be the same for any event. That's not the case. That's never the case. A wedding is always going to be a premium thing. It's always going to involve much more perfection. I can't just show up and play music. Uh, you know, there's planning, there's a timeline, there's all sorts of stuff. So, uh, I'm, I'm in the camp of, yeah, weddings are definitely more than a regular party. And uh, it's it's easy to suss that out, though. Like, I, I I don't know how it's possible that someone could not know that they're DJing a wedding when a client reaches out. Like, all you have to do is Google their name and the date, and you'll see their not page. You'll see their wedding page pop up. And also, like, on my website, it has a dropdown of what type of event. I don't, I don't think I've ever got somebody that just put in other or party or birthday and it became a wedding so anyway well again that's that's one of the things that uh is out there um i guess it started gaining traction because in social media which unfortunately unfortunately which way you look at it, sometimes people in social media say hey go do this go do that um this i i look at as one of the things kind of like the people who've done the uh simon challenge or a tide pod challenge and those stupid uh, things that social media is not the answer to everything and that the um people who are going around and saying hey you know what don't tell a dj that it's a wedding tell it it's a party because then you'll get charged less because it's not a it's, it's a party not a wedding well yeah you are 100 right there's more work going into it than a normal party because you have multiple areas and in depending on where the wedding is at you may have multiple setups. You may have a ceremony setup, and then you have a reception setup, or a ceremony setup, a cocktail setup, and then a, re a reception setup. So you may have three, maybe even four setups for an event. And I know Hunter in uh, uh, South Carolina, he also does a uh, good amount of weddings. Uh, he hasn't done one in a little bit because just because of business, but he has one coming up soon. He's the best DJ on the beach. And... Uh, 
He also has his Dunkin' Donuts today, so he's all happy because he has his Dunkin' Donuts cup. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about that, uh, of someone contacting you and saying, hey, um, I'm having a party, and all of a sudden you start asking questions, and you find it's a, it's a wedding. What What do you think about that? Hunter. Hunter has left the chat. Um, <laughs> at this, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, I'll come. I'll come back to you then, Jeff. What about you? What, what do you think of that one? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, similar to what Solsa said. I mean, it's um, it's it's night and day, you know, for most parties compared to weddings. It's just a, just a lot more involvement. There's a lot more pre-planning. Uh, um, you know, it's, I don't know how you can confuse the two. I mean, if it's just the reception, if you're just hired to, yeah, you know, I just want you to show up. Yeah. Let's, let's say that the ceremonies at a church, we don't need you there. We just want you to show up at this wedding uh, reception and play music for four hours and there's nothing else involved. Yeah, sure. That that might be a, a, a different story. That's rarely the case, but uh, but that could be a different story. Yeah, I mean that's um, that's like a, a standard like a, a high school dance for me. You know, just show up and play for three three four hours. Um, weddings are a little bit more complicated because there's a first dance, there's a father daughter. You know, those you know a lot a lot going on. There's a cake cutting. You know, there, there's any and independent upon you know the couple. There could be up to, you know, 12 different things going on, you know, in those four hours or three hours. So, but yeah, sure. If it's just, yeah, show up and play music for four hours. There's, there's, uh, there's nothing more than, you know, throw, throw, a there, here's a list of songs we'd like to hear, you know, sure. You know, that, that I, I would give them a, a little break. Absolutely. I wouldn't go with my full wedding um, quote because I'm not doing a ceremony um and and of course it depends on lighting and and other factors too but but yeah i i don't i don't know i've never had anybody try to pull one over on me to you know try to fool me um so you know it's been usually pretty straightforward i think my... maybe the, I, I think maybe the people in north carolina and south carolina uh they're not into maybe scamming people just well, yeah, I, I want to say being <laughs> de deceitful. <laughs> I, I, I take it people from North Carolina, South Carolina are really, really nice and uh, friendly people. And they yeah. don't want to deceive, deceive others. And Definitely. I know my brother in Ohio over here, uh, he also has a deal with uh, students because he's a teacher. But uh, Mr. Dixon, I got to ask you, what would you do if someone came to you and did that to you as far as, you know, hey, I'm having a party, then all of a sudden few weeks out oh yeah by the way i'm doing a first dance daddy daughter mother son oh i need a microphones for uh we're doing a little ceremony oh yeah we're doing a cocktail in another room what do you do then uh send them a uh an extra invoice okay so uh, i'm like if you pay me to just show up and play music that's what i'm going to do but if you want all the extras then this is my price very understandable very understandable and uh, let me ask you guys this one in the panel. Um, this is one of the things I do, and I have it on my website. I'm very upfront and very for my pricing because uh, I know Matt was talking earlier uh, before the show about tire kickers, people were looking for pricing and asking for pricing. And that's one of the things I, I, I do to try and limit that uh, tire kicker mentality is they go to my website and they see what I charge. And they're like, okay, fine, great. You know, I, I'm just doing reception only. I have 60 people. Okay, it's this price. Um, or I have, you know, 130 people. It's that price. Or it's at 200 people. It's going to be this price. So they have an idea of what I'm doing. I, I separate ceremony separate from reception, separate from additional setup. So when I do a uh, ceremony, um, it is a separate item from the reception, separate item than any cocktail. So if you need three subs, there's three charges. The uh, one thing is that um, if they're getting a ceremony, you have to go to get a reception too. It's not, I'm going to hire you for ceremony only. 
or I'm going to charge you even more money <laughs> because the fact that, you know, if I'm doing, not doing everything else, it's going to be an additional fee. Uh, but I also have two packets on there. I have one on-site ceremony, one off-site, because sometimes people want their ceremony earlier in the day and, you know, at a park. And then later on at night, it's at a venue for the, uh, for the wedding. So I'm going to go back to you, Dwayne. I'm going to start your, off with you, sir. Um, oh, you, I saw you just you muted, you muted yourself. <laughs> you me. Uh, do you separate the packages? Do you separate, you know, okay, reception only, reception with ceremony, reception ceremony, and cocktail? If there's three separate stuffs, do you have that kind of idea when you give pricing to people? Or do you just give, hey, there's my price right here, that's it? Uh, the way my package is set up is basically um, my highest package is everything is inclusive. So it, it has the ceremony and then the reception and all the bells and whistles. And then my middle package is pretty much just a reception kind of thing. So I try to lump it all in one one thing. And I just had a wedding where they picked a package, but I end up adding extra stuff to it. So I'm thinking I'm going to up my prices to include all the addict stuff in the one huge package. Like I think around here, they just want to see a price, not necessarily, you know, the breakdown. So, and that's that's one of the things. Like, kind of, again, both you and I are in the Midwest. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do for pricing. If you just want reception only, but you want to add stuff to and enhancements to a package, you want to add a custom gobo. You want to add a uh, additional speakers. You want to add something to it. There's additional stuff you can go order a la carte. It's kind of like going to and I'm going to use this term a couple of times tonight, McDonald's, uh, and you order a meal. Well, it comes with a medium fry, medium Coke. Well, I want to upgrade to a large Coke and a large fry. And hey, you know what? On my, on my sandwich, I add an extra hamburger patty, or I want to take something out. I can customize it on the app or at the kiosk or I tell the, uh, the person there at the counter what I want, but I may pay more for those extra mm -hmm. options. And that's kind of thing I, you know, you kind of give a package, but then you can go in there and change it around. And Mike, I see you, Mike, over there. Uh, BK, have it your way. This is very correct, sir. Uh, whoppers are always great. Uh, also asked, am I giving anything away like the moose is doing on the YouTube channel? Um, I can give away Hunter. Hunter's, uh, Hunter, I can give you away tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, there's, no gifts right now I have. I have nothing to give uh, other than than everyone's here wisdom. Uh, <laughs> and also you finished about 11 weddings and four prayer parties since uh, September, last week of September, told this last weekend. You've been a very busy man, Mike. I know you have been. I know I chat with you quite a bit, and you're always running around like a chicory head chopped off. Matt, what about you? Do you uh, – oh, Matt, Mike said he will take you, Hunter. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm here. Matt, I'm here. What, oh, what, what about you. you? Do you do your packages separate, like, you know, reception and then, you know, add, you know, add additional charge for ceremony and so forth? Uh, so I only have one that doesn't include ceremony. Um, and then uh, and it's like a basic four hour reception only. The rest are six, seven and eight hours up to um, they don't get a discount if it's less, but uh, it's it's increasing production. So, I mean, my my main package has six hours lighting, cold sparks, uh, ceremony, cocktail reception, uh, whatever else. And then up from there is like the better DJ booth, the bigger lighting system, the trust towers, includes a photo booth, and then like up includes a CO2 gun. And then you go up from there and then you get the lasers and the full production and uh, dancing on a cloud and this and that. So since I have so much stuff, it's easier just to like, listed at all like basically included in a package and then if they don't want something they could substitute it uh, or they can just like see all of my offerings and just be like hey we want this and this and this but we don't need this and this and then i'm like okay cool i can get you a custom price which that also helps with the whole being ghosted after sending them your pricing because that gives them a follow-up of like uh you know i say oh we can also create a custom package and then they come back and say, oh, well, what, what would the price be for this and this and this and this? Because they've already got an idea of my pricing. So at that point, got it. So, um, yeah, but I, 
like for me, I used to charge a la carte. I didn't used to be the package guy. I always used to be like, okay, like here's the pricing for four hours DJ service. Here's pricing for cocktail. Or here's pricing for ceremony. But now that it's all like battery powered, my ceremony, I don't mess with lapels. I don't do an external mixer. It's all one wireless mic into the back of the thumb go iPad in there. Battery powered sets up in two minutes. Like I don't mind throwing ceremony in because it doesn't like it doesn't cost me any real time to set it up. And then for cocktail hour, I just take that speaker and bring it to cocktail hour. So all these guys that charge five, six hundred bucks extra to cover ceremony and cocktail hour, I'm just like, that's ridiculous. The amount of that that either means that they don't know how, how to optimize their setup for like what it should be, or they just, you know, it, unless you're Lou Paris who offers you know, a $25,000 ceremony rig that he built. That's probably exaggerating, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I've, I've always been like, nobody cares about the ceremony. Like people think that ceremony is a big deal. It's really not like the thing that people remember is the good time they had on the dance floor and the food and the venue. And just like the couple that I I've had so many, not so many, but I've had a couple ceremonies early in my years where the mics dropped out because they were sure mics which is why I'll never use sure mics again and neither should you, anybody listening, but uh, they were sure mics and they would drop out and I would be like, so afraid to ask for a review, but never once did it get mentioned. So I don't know. That's a long winded answer. I'm rambling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I guess I'm one of those people cause I do charge $600 for a ceremony because I do lapel yeah, mics, see, but I, I do it separately. Yeah, see, that's, a, that's gives people options. That's extra work. Like, that's the thing. I, I get it. If you're, if you're, if I had to run, like I offer a lapel service, but I charge like 400 bucks for it. And then I tell them, look, the wireless handheld's included because it's significantly less setup time and less work and it's going to sound better. And they're like, okay, we trust you. Like, well, I hate lapels. I, I, do, I hate I do, so I do pretty well with the lapels. I, I do pretty and well. Plus the pictures. I, I can't, I can't knock the pictures. Jeff, what about you, sir? Do you do separate packages, or do you do one package, or what do you do for when you do a when you do a wedding? Yeah, separate packages. I mean, I um, uh, I do not uh, include the ceremony. You know, that that's extra. Yeah, it's an extra charge, and that's just old school. Um, it, it, you know, twenty years ago, people got married in a church, and you know, you you very rarely you know DJed. Uh, you know, anything in a church, there was no setup. Uh, you just did the reception, you know, modern times, there's more barns, there's more event centers, there's more places where people are are doing the, you know, one and done, you know, they're getting married and having the reception in the, in the same place. Um, you know, 20, 20, 30 years ago, there weren't that many places like that. There were a few, but um, now, nowadays, it's like everybody's got a barn venue to, uh, to get married in. And uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, some are better than others. But um, for me, uh, I like to charge extra or a different, a separate uh, setup for that, because quite often it is in a different location. You know, it might be down by a lake, uh, you know, whereas the, the the reception is in a barn uh, or it might be outside the barn or something. So so it's a big, you know, it, it's just different. Every every wedding is different. Every wedding is a is a you know a little bit different setup, different uh, request, whether it be lighting or 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 speakers. So you know, I, I like to tailor each one, but I do have uh, set set prices on on things, but they're not all looped uh, or uh, you know just lumped in together. Okay, and Hunter, I know you are more of an hourly person. But do you charge yeah. an extra fee or anything uh, for a ceremony or you just go, oh, I'm there six hours, so six I, hours uh, times your fee or. Uh, basically, I just do 50 an hour, no extra charge. And I use the basic setup with my Rockville Rock booth, my two JBLs, this, you know, Bolton support, speaker stands, the Shure P, uh, PG-58 microphone, uh, my Yamaha MG-10, and of course, my ceremony rig, which I'm getting ready to upgrade very very soon to my ion and a speaker stand a battery pack and i don't really charge extra i just mostly do the 15 hours since i'm a small independently owned private owned business that's just doing it for family and friends and i'm, I'm not really a package guy so whatever they get is what they get so i don't really do packages okay so a and couple things yeah and going back to that first question 
I don't really get mixed up. I barely get people mixing up a party with a wedding. You haven't got anyone yet to go to do that to you. Which is good. Which yeah, is a good they, thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, they always yeah, they always tell me specifically what they want me to DJ for and they don't really call it a party. They just mainly call it a wedding and then when I know it's a party, it's gonna be like a birthday party and stuff like that. So then you're very lucky, up. sir. <laughs> so uh DJ Fire, welcome to the chat, sir. I see you in there. Uh DJ Solstice is a ghost. I can't see him. Yeah, I see his background. I hear him, but yeah, he is invisible. Uh DJ Mikey Mike said I charge a ceremony if offsite and if cocktail hour is also uh looks like offsite. Uh do you mean offsite like off the facility? Like the ceremony is like two, three, five miles away or earlier in the day, or if it's outside the room that it's in. Um, that's what I look at is separate setups. If there's a if the cocktail hours in the same room as reception, like of course I'm not gonna charge extra for that. If the ceremony is the same room as the reception, if it's one setup, I will give, and depending on what's going on, um, I will give an extra upgrade. You know, give an extra enhancement for them, but I still charge the same price. So the price is still the same. I may add an enhancement, say, oh, well, hey, you know what? I will give you X additional to, because of the fact that's all in the same area, but still charge the same price. Uh, and the reason why is the work still the same amount of work. Um, it just boils down to do I need to do an extra setup or not, which an extra setup takes, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do. If that uh, DJ Fire said, if ceremony is in the same pl uh, same place as reception, uh, he does not charge. If it's in a different place, he does charge. So there's some answers right there. Uh, so this goes on to the next thing, um, far as charging. And uh, I don't know if you guys just saw this or not. And I don't want I I know what people all different charge different areas and so forth and so on. I'm going to ask him what you charge, but um, it was in the news that. Uh, in the state of California, uh, they're giving a, a pay increase to fast food workers to $20 an hour. Um, we're seeing more and more states and municipalities uh, increase um, hourly wages. The city of Chicago is also getting rid of tipped workers. So tipped workers will make the same amount of money as non-tipped workers. Um, I'm not trying to get political here. I don't want to get political here. Uh, that's not where we're talking about politics. We don't talk about politics in the show. Um, but the thing is that that's the decision they are making. The thing with that said, are you reevaluating what you are charging currently for pricing for 2024? Because I know I have some weddings set for 2024, but you do have new weddings coming in. You have new people inquiring all the time, be it for a party or whatever. And when you see all these different places are charging X amount of dollars or pay, having people being paid X amount of dollars per hour, uh, what do you do? Do you increase your price or do you stay at the course? So I'm going to start with Hunter on this one uh, where he's at in South Carolina. I don't know if South Carolina is doing a increase or, you know, you know what the state uh, minimum wage is down there. But um, I haven't I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything. But for 2024, I'm still trying to, I'm still thinking on it of whether I should stay the course at 50 an hour or go up to like 75, 80 an hour, or maybe even higher than that for, you know, per hour. I'm not, I'm not sure. That some, that's something I probably have to talk with my parents about because they know more about money than I do. I'm not really a money person. I'm, I'm not, don't know much about money. So I might say the course for now, but for 2024, we'll have to. I'll have to sit down and kind of discuss that with my parents. Okay. So, Matt, you being in California, uh, you're more affected by this than a lot of people here. Um, mm -hmm. What about you? Are you looking at maybe increasing your uh, pricing for 2024? Because, again, that you have different areas of the country saying, hey, we're going to uh, change the minimum wage. We're going to have people get paid more. Um, is that going to uh increase your pricing? Come back to me in three minutes. I'm picking up something from somebody at storage right now. Oh, fine. Be that way. But yes, I have. You're going, I have you're going answers, in and out, Burger. Don't no. lie. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, no, I'll be back in five Well, minutes. now you got to go in and out, Burger, for us now. <laughs> Jeff, what about you, sir? What about you in uh, in uh, North Carolina? 
Uh, yeah, my prices are going up in 24, definitely. Yeah, just inflation. I mean, I, I didn't uh, raise them much in 23. So uh, I'm going to make up for that in 24. So they're going up probably between 10 and 15% in that ballpark. So, you know, $100 for every $1,000, you know, that's that's not that's not a small amount. I know insurance, uh, last year our insurance went up. I, I got to wait till my insurance actually starts in, I want to say May, April or May is when I get the thing. And I usually pay it before it's due, but I had to see my, what my insurance is going to go up to for next year. And it's like, that's one to me, one of the biggest driving factors. Plus some of the music services that we use, they've gone up, you know, uh, promo only, uh, still staying the same price, but they may change. You never know. Dwayne, what about you over there in Ohio? Are you looking at to increase your pricing? Is Ohio also doing a um, a price increase or a wage increase for minimum wage or anything like that there? I think they are, but I was going to go up anyway after doing these last two weddings and things. And with the, with my travel and all the different packages I can just combine. Yeah, I was going, I'm going up. You're going to increase your price? Yep. So uh, Mikey Mike said, some barn weddings have the reception in the barn and the ceremony may be 10 minutes away at a different location and a cocktail hour may be an extra setup. Okay. And then uh, DJ Insurance. Um, I don't know. I, I, I have full business insurance, so I have not just liability. I actually have full business insurance, um, which I should get my insurance agent on here one of these days and have her talk about insurance because there's a, there's a lot of nuances to insurance. And the one thing she always says, no one ever said I had too much insurance at a time something happened. You get in a car accident, something happens to your house. You know, never say, oh, well, you're always complaining about the insurance company didn't cover X. Well, did you have that part of your policy? And that's that's one of the things having an insurance agent that's your advocate when you're buying stuff. Um, that That's always great. Okay, I use Next Insurance. Okay. Yeah, if it works for you, that's 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 fine. And that's that, the only thing is that you always want to make sure you're properly covered. And having insurance is a very important, especially for us with uh, businesses and having – big, heavy things high up in the air. And I know some guys like to put truss up and and uh, run lights overhead and stuff like that. And having insurance to cover that in case something should happen is very important. You don't want anyone getting hurt, but sometimes things do happen. Um, so when we look at stuff and we go around looking at things and we say, hey, we're going to increase our pricing XYZ or ADC, whatever it is, uh, one of the things you got to take into consideration, again, what, what Jeff said is, is, you know, uh, everything going up in costs, uh, you know, gasoline, depending where you're at in the country, gasoline can be higher or in my case, diesel fuel, um, you know, X mod dollars per gallon, uh, Matt in California, you know, they're paying almost $7. I'm a gallon back. Gas. Oh, there you go. Let um, me answer, let me answer the question now. Go ahead. <laughs> Whenever you're free. Uh, so am I raising the prices? Um, uh, I, I'll tell you what I am doing. So right now I have three different pricing documents. I have one for, uh, like premier Saturday dates and then I have one for like Fridays and Sundays. Um, and then one for, well, not even really that it's one that's more for like Sundays or so I don't know. It, it depends on like the venue, the date, et cetera. But then I have one that's like cheap, cheap, like if it's a weekday, like this is what I'll do it for, but not less. So what I think I'm doing is I'm just going to start sending everybody the full pricing and make that like the new kind of middle ground. And then probably have one that's 500 bucks more for more premium dates. Um, and then like another one, I don't know, but maybe a little bit, but I think more just sending the full pricing instead of being like, eh, I could do this pricing on this date. So I think if anything, that's what I'm going to do. Cause like, I, I think my pricing is fair for, for what I bring. Um, it's probably not enough, but I think people see it. Uh, a lot of other DJs here do the whole base pricing and then adding enhancements or upgrades. And so they see like an initial price of 1500 and they think that they're going to pay. And they see my initial price of, 
you know, almost 3000. And they're like, that's, that's so crazy. Like, that's so high, we're not even going to respond. And then maybe like two weeks later, oh, we did our research and realized like, everything you're providing is uh, a better value than this guy. So I think I'm going to look at it. But I don't know. Um, I, I, I what I am doing is like Saturdays in October, I'm charging an extra $1,000 uh, on top of the top pricing because I'm getting so sick of uh, holding these jam packed dates for people that don't have, you know, people that think they're going to get a deal on a Saturday in October is just mind blowing. To me. So a little bit of everything, but we'll see when the minimum wage goes up, we'll see how much more expensive things get. I mean, I'm Jewish, so I notice everything going up by even a penny. So when I go into Chipotle and my burrito now costs an extra 50 cents, you know, who, who I, I don't want to pay that 50 cents. So let me pass it off to my clients. Like, you know, everything's going up. It's, you go to you guys have flame broiler out there? No. It's like a big it's like a big chicken chain and uh it's like a, a uh, like a Szechuan style chicken. It's it's hard to describe, but it's really good. And okay. um I got to look them up. <laughs> it used to it used to be Yeah, it used to be like 5.49 for a little mini bowl. Now it's like 8.15 and you know, this is this is a $3 increase over the course of 2 years, you know. That's that's what's crazy is how much prices have been increasing. And what's great is you go on Yelp you go to a restaurant and you see their menu, you can see exactly how much this place is increasing their prices. And it's just, it's absurd. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably, I probably will be, but at the same time, it's, it's about finding a balance. And I tell this to everyone, like I would rather have a full calendar and make a hundred or 200 bucks less per wedding than what I want to make, than have a sparsely populated calendar and be making the full price. Like this, I'm not going to cry very true. over a couple hundred bucks. So and, you got to find the balance. Yeah, and, and that, that's um, one of the things. I, quite, quite a cool thing. If I raise my prices, you know, in 2024, I feel like no one's going to book me because they're so used to the same price for about five years. That's the thing I'm worried about: is no one booking me. We if I all, raise my we all do. We all worry about that, and that's the, that's the <laughs> balance thing you have to, as owner of a business, is like, yep. like you. Let's say you own McDonald's. And you always <laughs> sell your McDonald's basic cheeseburger for you guys were talking about earlier. McDonald's basic cheeseburger. I keep going back to McDonald's because it's a they're everywhere. <laughs> basic McDonald's cheeseburger for a dollar. You've been doing it for a long time. Now all these costs for everything, you know, wages, insurance, pro, uh, product. That dollar cheeseburger you can't make anything on. You're losing money on it. You know you need to sell higher. And the, the one thing is that you know. Um, I ran into a uh, DJ uh, at the last wedding I did. And he's a friend of mine, and um, I was talking to him, and he charges seven thousand dollars for his um, his wedding, and he's the one that has the booth that the TV goes up in the air. It's on it's on it's on hydraulic lift. It lifts up the air. Uh, the TV. And he charges seven thousand dollars for. His it goes uh, up in his the air. It's on, it's on. It's on hydraulic lift. It lifts up the air. Uh, he he charges seven thousand dollars. I'm waiting for fire here. <laughs> He's got a volume up. Uh, I'm getting feedback. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I can hear. I can hear you, and then I hear you again. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> it's picking up your speaker and it delayed. Uh, but it's it's one of the things that. With, uh, with that, you know, again, he charges seven thousand dollars for him going on DJ and his package. And he does like you know twenty five weddings a year. Um, he does less weddings, but gets paid more money. And he does a hell of a job. Does a a, a really nice job. Has a great look. Uh, am I seven thousand dollars? I don't have that equipment he has as far as uh, display and stuff like that. But I do feel the same thing. He goes, because he was asking me about pricing, and we're talking about pricing. And, you know, again, I'm lower than he is. But he goes, why? He goes, you're going to do the same amount of work. He goes, do you give a discount for weekdays? I'm like, no. No discount for weekdays. No discount for different parts of the year. It's the same amount of work. And that's the way I look at it. If you're going to do the same amount of work, I, I why give a discount? It'd be like, uh, like, like Nathan uh, if I got if I got cut the lawn on a Monday or cut a lawn on a Friday uh, in June or in October, 
it's the same amount of work. I'm cutting a lawn. I'm using the same amount of fuel. My, my time is money. I'm going to charge you the same fee. It's not like, oh, well, hey, you know, can you cut your lawn on Sunday? I want a Sunday discount. It's just still the same amount of work. And that's the way I kind of look at it. Still doing the same thing in the same uh, same amount of uh, work. Why give all these extra discounts? Um, and Mikey, Mike was saying he... Because uh, it's... He, I was um, going to say, like, it's... It, it's not uh real quick it's it's like i i get the logic but to me my logic is well like just for example for last week i got hit up for a photo booth and normally we charge like 200 250 an hour for photo booth this was on a thursday they hit me up like last friday uh like you know the friday before i'm like i'm not going to book anything else that thursday and i gave them like a discount they still wanted a discount on top of it and we settled on like 350 for 2 hours Plus, like, you know, it was catered, so they give me dinner. And I'm like, either I sit at home and do nothing or I make $350. So to me, it's like I, I get that logic, but you have to find the balancing point of, like, still making it worth it and putting money in your pockets versus staying at home and making nothing. So, like, yeah, you don't want to give the whole kitchen sink away, but, um, you know, if it's the difference of them booking you versus somebody else, I, I don't see why cutting them a break wouldn't wouldn't hurt but i i get it too like i mean it's the same amount of work same amount of prep depend doesn't matter what day it is but well, this at the same goes, time like yeah this also i like back, being booked this also goes back to knowing what your cost is walk out the door so if your cost right. is to walk out the door to the photo booth again your cost is your fuel your time your materials and again photo booth if they're using a printer you know, your paper and ink, if they're you're doing, you know, digital, only online still, you got, you know, in internet connection. If the place doesn't have your internet connection, you got to use a phone as a hotspot, those kind of things. Instru your incidentals on doing a uh, an event, batteries for microphones, whatever it is, that's all your cost. If you start adding all your costs together, you have to look at what the cost to walk out the door. If your cost is $700 to walk out the door, and you're and they, someone says, "Hey, I'll give you eight hundred dollars." In reality, you're only making a hundred dollars. If your cost to walk out door is two hundred dollars, and they're, you're going to make you know all, all this extra money, hey, great, no problem. You want to give a discount? That's entirely up to you. And that's one thing, Mikey. Mike was saying that uh, he, when he does a price increase, he'll raise his price up um, to like twenty five hundred dollars, but to give a five hundred dollar discount for all the clients. I'm like, well, that's kind of to me, that doesn't seem right because then you're de-evaluating what you're doing. And again, why give a discount? If, if you're going to be $2,000, just charge $2,000. If you're going to be $2,500, stay at $2,500. If you're running some kind of special, I wouldn't say discount, add an enhancement. Add, say, hey, I will add in head table up lighting or I'll add in something that's very basic, very minimal price that you can add in there to add a little more value to the package. But discount, I've never been a fan for discounting. You know, uh, I, I guess that comes from my time in retail when uh, when there's discounts for things, people always look at it as dis a discount right. is, is cheap. And sometimes they don't, don't value then when you discount. Um, going into DJ Fire, welcome in, sir. I'm sure you got something to say. You're, you're saying had, stuff in chat. I had to jump in. I was, you know, I wasn't going to plan on coming in, but Y'all talking about stuff I wanted to say some stuff about. So, Go ahead. So, um, uh, who, I can't remember who said it. Um, they were talking about raising prices and worried about, you know, people not wanting to book you because your prices are high. Well, I mean, if you think about it, gas prices are high. Food prices are high. Um, to get your vehicle fixed is high. But we still get gas, we still buy food, and we still get our cars fixed because we have to, or we either starve, or we don't get somewhere, or we don't get somewhere because the car won't move or run or something. So if all of us DJs are around about the same price, and a bride and groom are sitting down looking at DJ Solstice's business card, and they're looking at my business card, and they're looking at Buddy's business card, and they're looking at Everyone that's ever been on the show's business card, and they're all looking at them, and they're all like, all right, well, Solstice is 10000 and I'm just making up these prices. I don't know what your packages are, but Solstice is $10,000, and Buddy's $9,500, and DJ Fire's $6,000, and, and um, 
DJ blah, blah, blah is $11,000 or something like that. You know, they're all pretty close. I mean, we're still going to have to book one because we need a DJ. We need someone to be there at our wedding. We want our wedding. We don't want someone that's unprofessional. We don't want someone that's, um, that's DJ goofball or something, you know. Um, we want someone that knows what they're doing, has a great setup. You know, DJ Solos has a great setup. Buddy has a great setup. Um, all you guys have great setups from what I've seen. And if I was a bride or a groom looking at a DJ and I really needed one, I wanted my, you know, for the groom, if I was the one paying for the wedding and I wanted my fiance to say yes at the altar, I'm going to make sure that that wedding goes over a cent. So I'm going to pay whatever it takes to make her the happiest bride there is can be. So I'm going to pay whatever it takes. So if a DJ asks for $5,000, I'm going to pay it. So I feel that's how the customer should be. Yeah, I will probably raise my prices a little bit because just like Buddy said, my insurance is going up next year. Um, actually, it starts in December, but um, I mean, I, I've had to raise my lawn prices too. It's not its not just in DJ and it's everywhere. Um, so its I know it's getting harder and harder for some of those DJs to, to make a living, especially for, you know, you guys, this is the only thing you do. So it's it's definitely hard to uh, to make a way out there, but I mean, hopefully there's other people that you know will be like, yeah. I mean, we've seen this guy do the work. It doesn't matter if he's ten thousand dollars or you know he's worth it, you know. And and if someone won't pay the money and they go out and get, or they think they got a better DJ for cheap, let him use that DJ and. Uh, he shows up with one speaker and one light, can't keep music on rhythm, can't get the songs played on cue. They're going to wish they would have spent that extra money and got the better DJ. I've actually seen this hand in hand uh, where Mike DJed uh, for a Halloween deal out at Vela Vida. They had some other guy the following weekend DJ, and his setup was really bad. And I don't even know why they hired him, because he sucked. <laughs> But Mike's setup was better, and that just kind of shows you they paid Mike more than they paid the other guy, but they got less for less money. So well, the other the other thing with Mike, the other thing with Mike, um, his uh, I mean, you guys have seen it or not? His uh, his booth uh, with the uh, Pennywise face on the uh, scrim, that was really cool. How him and his wife did that, and uh, he really went all off for Halloween with that scrim. And I'm I, like, I'm very. I'm like, wow, that's very, very cool. If you're doing a Halloween party, he had that theme down his pat for all of Halloween. And it's, yeah, it's I, need, you know, I need to get my girlfriend a cricket. That was just yeah. amazing. Again, you saw it, Matt. He, that was that was really cool what he did. Cool. And I would definitely I would like say it. it was really, really nice. Yeah, it was I mean, it was cool. And he's working on some cool stuff for Christmas. And I've actually got a gig to do with him. Uh, an outside event, um, doing some lighting around an ice skating rink during the heart of Christmas uh, festivities up here. Hopefully the weather cooperates. We're going to have moving heads, uh, truss, all different kinds of cool stuff. It's going to be a great event, and I'm hoping the weather cooperates. So, Well, plus also you have right by you that Festival of Lights. So I, I, Tracy and I went to, I want to say like 23 years ago when we just got married uh, down there. Where's that um, at? Festival Mat is that in Mattoon? Mattoon. In Mattoon. Oh, okay. It's in the park. Yeah, they've started. Yep. They just started a couple of weeks ago putting lights up. Yeah, they, it, it, you drive through it, and that was uh, that that was really really cool. And um, there's it, it was it was a, there's it was one a fun in time. Quincy. There's one in Quincy, Illinois. Um, I think it's six miles long. Yeah, Naperville it's has Naperville has one. And then um, up here, uh, Morton Arboretum uh, does one as well because Morton Arboretum has this. And I've been there for tons of weddings. Uh, they have this roadway that goes all the way through the whole entire facility because they have all these different groves of different plants growing throughout the whole Arboretum. And, but they light up the whole entire uh, driveway with these uh, lights and stuff, and they do – uh, lighting the trees and they have gnomes and stuff like that and they they do a bunch of cool stuff for winter 
uh, really, really pretty. Um, it costs a few bucks to go in there, but the one in Mattoon, I would definitely go back. Uh, again, I got to come back down that way. So the next question. Mattoon. Mattoon. It's Mattoon. It's like Des Moines. Mattoon. Matt it is, it is not Matt East Plains, it is not Matt Detroit. Toon. It's Detroit. Mattoon. <laughs> and just like Solstice has a Rockville shirt on. I didn't know he used. Oh, yeah, I guess he does have a Rockville scrim. I do have Rockville facade, and and the their cart, their Rockville cart is the best, uh, the best cart you'll ever use. Yeah, I I love yeah, I love their rock, nice and sturdy, and it yeah. really hides my cables. Speaking, they, they used, speaking of of stuff, this is this is a question I have to all you DJs. Now, this is if you're watching this on YouTube, you can answer down in the comments. Uh, I've, I've been curious, how many of you DJs that do your gig logs and your stuff on YouTube act? Um, do lighting companies ever contact you, like ADJ, Chave, Sheds, wanting to do product reviews on their videos? And if so, do you accept that, or do you try to stick with the name brand stuff? Like if a Chinese company um, sends you like a deal saying, "Hey, we want you to review this light, this moving head, or something," will you do it, or do you I mean, stick with what you have? Free stuff is free stuff, so I'll say yes. Will I ever use it? Um, no. Half the stuff that Shed sent me, I just sell to somebody else. Um, but uh, <laughs> I kept the moving heads. Uh, the laser. If it's a bad product, I'm not going to use it. So Rick Webb is sending me four of his Pix bars that he featured in his homecoming gig log. Um, so we'll see how those work. Uh, but like I, me, I don't buy lighting unless I have a plan for it. So like I have lights that I've ordered through my supplier that are on their way here for like a new kind of smaller lighting package that I'm kind of setting up with my main package. Um, mm -hmm. But if I don't have a use for it, then like I wouldn't want it. So when Sheds hits me up and says, hey, we want to send you this. And I'm like, I don't have a use for it. I would use the 12 watt laser if it's a tw actually 12 watts. They're like, no, 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 we'll send you this one. I'm like, okay, but don't expect me to consistently use it. So right. I'll take it though. Free stuff's free stuff. Well, I'm not that well. About what about I, the rest of you guys? Well, I'm not, that, I'm not that lucky. I never, ever, ever have gotten anything sent to me in the mail from a company. I'm not that lucky. So I was like, forget it. I am getting rid of YouTube. And that's final. So I guess I'm not cut out to be a YouTuber, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, well, there's people. There's people. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of the some unknown. people get video or get free stuff and some don't. I mean, on TikTok, they're always TikTok's looking another one. Their products. TikTok, Instagram, you know Facebook, anywhere with video. Jeff, what about you? you know, what about you, sir? The amount, the amount of people that I've sold on those LD Icoa uh, 18 subs and LD systems won't return my damn emails. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's hey, that I can't speak for LD. I can only talk speak for us here. It's Jeff, what about you? Has anyone ever reached out to you and say, hey, uh, we want you to try these lights or try this speaker or try nah. this? No, I've, I've never got anything. Um, you know, it, it's funny how, you know, when you use a product and it works for you, uh, we're, we're all kind of like, yeah, this is the best thing going. This is the best, this is the best piece of equipment you can don't, don't buy that other crap. You know, it's like, um, is what it is. I mean, you know, it's, it, you're comfortable with the gear you use. Um, if somebody sent me a new light, um, you know, I, I, I might try to DMX it in, but I've got my DMX pretty much set. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess up my programming. Uh, to, I, I will try it in my basement, you know, might take it on a, a gig if I can, um, you know, see what it does. If I can, you know, uh, if I can DMX it in, you know, easily, sure, I will do that. But uh, I like my setup and uh, yeah, I don't want to mess with it. Okay. Well, what about you, Dwayne? Do you, has anyone ever contacted you? And if so, would they... Said, hey, I'm going to send you a free light or a free speaker or a free this. Would you use it and do a uh, a plug for it if it's good? Uh, yep. But yeah, I haven't got any like speakers or lights or anything. I got something from um, the Request Now app company. Um, after I did uh, a little shout out and a review in one of my videos, and then I have I bought a sticker light from Mark, so I did something with them. But that's the only oh that's the only only two um people so far. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I've yet well, to this, someone yeah. well, I, I have the... yet to have someone contact me. So 
I, I, I would take a look at where a product they give. And if it's good, yeah, I have no problem with it. You know, it's like anything else. Someone wants to send me something. I, I will, I will use it, but I've done a lot of recommendations and <laughs> I've seen a lot of recommendations for things uh, like the two little mini U King lights. Um, that's rec that was recommended to me from a few other DJs and I had them. I liked them. They're nice little lights and I use them every so often uh, at certain gigs because they just, they just work. Uh, they're nice and expensive. Two, it's less than $200 for two uh, moving heads. And, and you know, Hunter could buy that for $200, have two little moving heads and run D, uh, run a DX cable for uh, between the two of them. So you have a master slave and you just have it going out on the audience. They're nice little lights if you wanted to do that. It, it's not an expensive item, you know. Um, it, it's it's like anything else, you know. If someone wants to reach out and, you know, say, hey, you know, want to try it, want to try this, find who it is. So there's more comments in over here. Um Buddy and I know a DJ who hasn't raised his prices more than 20 years. You know who I'm referring to. I have a very good idea, sir. Uh, Mike also said, I rarely do gig logs. Hunter, do not give up on YouTube. Uh, and uh, Mike also said, you only basically well, post well, on Facebook. I just did. I just gave him on YouTube. Well, there you go. So it's too, it's too late for that. I don't it's think you many. should, but you know, again, it, you're you're a big boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm still gonna be your friend, man. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, so I'm gonna ask this final question for you guys, um, and we're kind of talking about this a little earlier uh, about stuff and going through things. Um, if you are out and you have to go somewhere, you have to go. You're you're, you're out at a gig. And you have to go and get something. And we're talking about, you know, I know uh, Mike, I, I'm not Mike, Jeff was talking about uh, stop at McDonald's to get some dinner for him and his kids. Uh, they're out about doing stuff. And um, if you're out and about, you're out to get stuff and you, you need to get something to eat. Where's your go-to place to stop? Like if, if, I, if I'm going on a long, you know, going on a trip, going to a gig, you know, I know I'm leaving at like you know, 11 o'clock in the morning to be there by, you know, uh, 1230 or 12 o'clock. You know, where do where I stop to get something to eat? Where's my go to places? And uh, I'm going to start with Hunter. I know Duncan's one of his favorite places for a drink. But if, right. if I had to ask, you know, you're going to a gig, you have to stop, get some food. What's your go to place for food? Well, usually... Like when when I would go to Florence at Dominion Church, I would always stop at like Olive Garden. That would be after the gig, and like if it's a nighttime gig, we always check into the hotel first and we get to the gig. And then after the gig, we usually go to like Olive Garden to get some food after. And it's just whatever's nearby. Okay, Jeff, what about you? Do you is there a place that you go to on the way? Because I know sometimes you go some pretty good distances for events. Well, last week we stopped at Wendy's just because it was uh, on the way. It was close by. It wasn't bad. I haven't eaten at Wendy's in a while. But uh, one of my favorites is Jersey Mike's. Uh, we stopped there on the way to going to the, uh, uh, one of the homecoming dances. My son and I, we both love uh, Jersey Mike's. And, um, I love Jersey so, Mike's. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a good old, good old sub, you know, oh, yeah. you get set up before you oh, get yeah. dressed, you know, let it just drip down on you and, you know, you don't care. Uh, that's kind of cool. So, yeah, I love but, Jersey. Uh, I love their yeah, yeah, Jersey Mike's. That's my go-to. Oh uh, yeah, we have we have artisan <laughs> sandwich places here. We don't have Jersey Mike's. <laughs> oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. <laughs> no, we do. I've never eaten there though. Jersey Jersey Mike's is really good. Uh, I like their uh, their chicken. Um, their uh, their grilled chicken is really really oh, good. Oh, um, oh, oh. And they're one of the few places they have barbecue sauce. Because to me, I can't have chicken without barbecue sauce. That's one of the things. Some of the subways have barbecue sauce, some don't. You're like um, my you're like my girlfriend. She she she's one of those weird barbecue sauce on fried chicken people. Like chicken strips, I, chicken nuggets, she's yep. barbecue sauce. It's so I, odd. I love I love barbecue sauce. You know, she's not the only barbecue one. Barbecue sauce is for barbecue food, not chicken. I had tonight on my pizza. Ah, that's with so brown weird. beef and bacon. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh Dwayne, what about you? What's your what's your go-to place for if you're going to a gig, you're out and about, you're running around, you're like, hey, I need to get some to eat. I, I'm gonna be there 
you know, it's going to be an hour before I get there. Where do I stop to get something to eat? What's my go-to? Uh, Burger King. I like their French fries. Yeah. Now, are you, are, do you dip your fries in the shake or not dip your fries in a shake? Nope. I just put ketchup on mine, eat it like that. Oh, I dip, it, I dip it in the oh. shake and give vanilla shake <laughs> or a strawberry shake. Oh, I just... You know, what I always like is dipping my fries when when McDonald's um, with the uh, the shamrock shake, dipping the fries in the shamrock shake. It's just, you know, fries in a shake to me, it's always great. <laughs> well, what about you, <laughs> Fire? What's your favorite place to go? McDonald's? McDonald's drive through sometimes just to grab a couple of McDoubles. Um, just to hold me over, especially if I'm eating like at the event. Just something to hold me over, something quick. Um, definitely never a Taco Bell because Taco Bell never agrees with you in the right way at the wrong time. So, oh, Taco Bell, dog. Yeah. Del Taco. Oh, I like their nacho fries. Their nacho fries are good. They're not your fries. They're my fries. Matt, Matt, yeah, they're not your fries. They're my fries. <laughs> Matt is. Uh, All right, hey, your hey, place let's, let's ask. Uh, let's ask the guy here. This is. Uh -oh. uh, what, what's your favorite go-to food on the way to a gig? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Yes, thank right. you. I'll okay, wait yeah, for somebody. <laughs> now, does he do spicy chicken, chicken or does he do regular chicken sandwich? Spicy or regular? Oh, what? A sandwich. Sandwich. Regular. Regular. He's the regular. He, he's the foil. Eat it out of the foil kind of guy. So I'm different. I do. I do the grilled nuggets at Chick Fil A. Grilled nuggets. Yeah, add a little bit of good. salt. Chick Fil A sauce, and uh, then uh, get the fries. You ever go to a party where they have the tray of those? You could just eat them all. Yes. <laughs> or any of the chicken tenders, the tray of chicken. Yes, there are actually. Um, there's a there's a place by me. At, uh, it's called Sporties in Bloomdale, Illinois. And yes, is a plug for them. Uh, they have uh, they make their own chicken tenders uh, fresh yeah. every time you order them. So they actually dip it in our own batter and they make them fresh. And they actually do catering. So they have a hot dog stand selling hot dogs, hamburgers, Italian beef, and chicken tenders. They're famous for their chicken tenders, but they do it for uh, catering too. So you can order a whole tray of their chicken tenders, and I can tell you they're awesome. Um, but, you know, a couple of uh, things here. Uh, I see... Uh, from Mike, he said sheets. Okay, sheets out east. Yeah, I, I I've been to sheets when I uh, worked for Exxon Mobil Corp. Uh, had a chance to go to a sheets. Sheets are crazy. He said four hot dogs with chili, onions, ketchup, and mustard. Oh, I'm not onion fan. Onions, the meat. And the, yeah, I'm not onion fan. That's why I stopped eating McDonald's because <laughs> they do the onions thing now. Um, Wait, got another one before the gig. Seven Eleven after the gig. Mickey D's. And then Mike said, uh, drink his Mountain Dew and chicken wing pretzels. Uh, no shake for him or he'll be in the little boy's room. And uh, I said, do you DJs uh, use a DJ gimbal for recording videos or take pictures at your events? Uh, Jeff said uh, he uses two GoPros, no gimbals. Uh, Matt, do you use a gimbal? Uh, I used to, um, but now uh, another plug for iPhone. The stabilization in iPhones is phenomenal now, so you don't even need a gimbal unless you have really shaky hands. Um, you can take great shots with the iPhone. It even has a level. It'll lock when the horizon is level as well. So even if you're shaking a little bit, it'll still keep your shot straight. Um, yeah, I used to use a gimbal for all of my like nice recordings of cinematics, but now like my hands with the stabilization on the iPhone is just as good. So okay. their gimbals, gimbals are pretty much pointless for iPhones, at least. Other okay. phones, maybe not. All right. DJ Fire, do you use a gimbal or not? I do not. I use the Sony ZV-E10, and I use the GoPro Hero 9. It has good stabilization on it, too. Like, you could move, move the thing, and you can't even tell you're moving it. It stays flat in the video. Okay. Dwayne, what about you? Do you gimbal or no gimbal? No gimbal. I just I, use um either my uh, iPhone or iPod um touch or sometimes my um Samsung or I have the little handheld um camcorder but I have one of those clips that I can like clip um clip it to the side of my um DJ booth and I can do it that way 
or the little tripod thing, one of those two. Okay. And what about you, cool thing? Gimbal well, or no gimbal? No gimbal, because I usually hold my phone like this. Or if I'm using my camcorder, like this. Okay. So Mike no said gimbal. he uses one because he has uh, numbness in his fingers. And that's why he uses a gimbal with his iPhone. I Wait, you guys never... Buddy, you never asked for... You never asked where I go before a gig. Oh, I thought I did. I thought it was. I thought it was simple. You're in California, in and out burger. No, no, because you got to think <laughs> about Del it. Taco. I'm usually, I usually don't have time to wait for 25 minutes at an In-N-Out or Chick Fil A at 12 o'clock when I'm getting to a gig at one. So what I do is I usually hop on Yelp and find like a local place or somewhere new that I haven't tried that's nearby where the uh, where the gig's gonna be. So that that way, like I'm close by, but I also want to. I like trying new places. So. Exploring that's always uh, cool. That's a cool thing to I do. I don't really have, uh, but like if because there's the place that I DJ in San Clemente all the time. There's a little teriyaki bowl place uh, right up the street from it, so I always go there at least if I'm in that area. But I try to plan these things ahead of time and and uh, not have to do the fast food route because my stomach is sensitive as well. So Taco Bell always sits solid though. So. Taco, we can't, you can never go wrong with Taco Bell. What about Del Taco? You guys in California, we talk talking uh, about Del Taco. We don't, it's not that, like, yeah, it's a California thing, but, like, it's it's not that good. Like, it's their their fries are great, um, and their fish tacos are really good, but, like, the rest of their food, it's, like, meh at best. It's really not that good. <laughs> Taco Bell, well, everybody here, everybody here is diehard Taco Bell over Del Taco. Uh, really? Or... or or tacos, yes. The okay. the only reason you go to Del Tacos, Del Tacos more California style. So they have like, you know, California burritos with fries in them. They do more guacamole. They do more French fries and American foods. So if you're looking for that kind of fusion, that's where Del Taco is, is king. Okay. But Taco Bell is just, Taco Bell is late night Taco Bell. That's just like a rite of passage. Oh, the, with the bell rings, you know, run for the border. You know, <laughs> that's a that's a in, in and out. The great thing about In and Out is it's open till on weekdays. It's open till twelve. I think it's open till like one, and then on weekends it's open till like one forty-five or two in the morning. So we have that. We also have Raising Canes. I don't know if you guys have Raising Canes. Yep, Raising Canes. Yeah, I, like, I, I like their fries, and they have really good chicken tenders. Um, so with don't that put, you said, don't put barbecue on that. You don't put barbecue I do. on that. I put do barbecue you? sauce. Yeah. Uh, Sweet baby rays, big nice big bowl of sweet baby uh, rays, dip them <laughs> into. Oh, okay. <laughs> With that said, that cherry is on top of that Sunday right there. Another show in the can, guys. I appreciate everyone here tonight and DJ Fire coming in tonight. By the way, DJ uh, Brantley did not come in tonight. He has some family uh, stuff going on, uh, and we wish him lots of luck with that and uh, lots of uh, good feelings and positive vibes. Other than that, guys, you guys have a good night out there. Thank you all for talking tonight in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you follow, like, subscribe, thumbs up everything, and put any comments, critique, criticisms down below. Other than that, Hunter, take us away. See you guys later. Peace out.